Hi, and welcome again to another Satchel class. Hola, que tal? Soy Mr. Castrillon, and well, I welcome you, welcome you back to this lesson called Mis Vacaciones. Today's lesson has a lot of new vocabulary, so I will recommend for you to have pen and paper because we're going to learn lots of words. Uh, we're going to be describing different types of um, words that we use when we describe our holidays. Also, we're going to be using the past tense with different verbs. So as I said, uh, I would say, and I would recommend for you to get pen and paper or to take a picture of each one of the slides that I'm going to show you today, so you can actually learn lots and lots out of it. Okay, um, although it's a key stage three, year eight lesson, uh, if you're year seven or you are year uh, nine or year 10, please, or year 11, please do feel free to watch the video so you can learn a lot more today. I won't show you any uh, objectives because in fact, the objective itself is just to describe our holidays. Describir nuestras vacaciones. So let's start with our lesson today. So we have our friend Esme. Esme, ¿a dónde fuiste de vacaciones el año pasado? El año pasado fui. So first of all, we have el año pasado. Last year. El año pasado. And then we have the word fui. Fui means in Spanish, in this context, I went. Okay, so el año pasado fui a la playa. Can you guess which one of the three pictures a la playa is? Yes, that's the one. A la montaña. Which one do you reckon a la montaña is? Exactly. Al campo. So you can say fui a la playa, fui a la montaña, fui al campo. So the way we do this, or we kind of use this verb, which you can try right here, is fui a. Okay. Now I want you to notice something really important. When I have a feminine word like la playa o la montaña, I say a la. Because the word that follows is feminine. But if I have a masculine word, then we don't say a el, we say al. Al literally means, it means fui al campo. It literally means al, let me see, fui a el. There we go. And that's because the word is masculine. Okay, so you would say fui a la because it's feminine and you would say fui al, which is al and it's masculine. That's a very important thing to remember. Let's continue. Fui a España. So remember that you can actually say which country you went to. Fui a Colombia. Fui a Japón. Fui a los Estados Unidos. Fui a Grecia. Fui a Escocia. So you can use all these countries to say where you went on your holidays. But if you want to be more precise and you want to tell us exactly where you went or where you went, then you would say concretamente. That means uh, more precisely. And in this case, a Barcelona. Notice how often I'm using the word a, because I'm saying I went to. So fui a España, concretamente a Barcelona. Fui a las Islas Canarias. Fui al sur de Francia a un pueblo llamado Perpignan. Fui al norte de Escocia a un pueblo que se llama Ulapul. Now, as you can see, I'm including other items or kind of words that are really important. A un pueblo, which I hope you understand, a small town, que se llama, 
that is called or called Ulapul. Now, we are going to talk about when we went. ¿Cuándo fuiste exactamente? Fui en el mes de julio. Now, notice that I changed from a to en, because we are talking now about time. So, fui en el mes de julio. But if you don't want to use en el mes de julio, you can easily leave this out. Fui en julio. And it's exactly the same. Let me just do something here so you can actually see better. Fui en julio. And it makes perfect sense. Fui del 10 al 25 de julio. Can you guess what that means? Fui del 10 al 25 de julio. Salí de Edimburgo el 10 de julio y volví dos semanas después. So look at now I'm adding two more verbs in past. Salí, volví. Salí means I left Edinburgh or I went out. Volví means I returned, came back. ¿Cómo fuiste? ¿Cómo el fue el viaje o el vuelo? Right? So I'm going to give you one minute to try and work out the name for these five different types of transportation. Let's see where you can work them out. You have one more minute left. Okay, I hope you now have the names of those different types of transportation. So let's have a look. The first one, coche. Fui en coche. Feel free to repeat after me. Fui en coche. Fui en barco. Fui en barco. Fui en avión. Fui en avión. Fui en tren. Fui en tren. Fui en autobús. Fui en autobús. So now we have where we go and how we actually got there. So a sentence could be, fui a España y fui en avión. Fui a Inglaterra y fui en tren. Fui a Grecia 
y fui en autobús. Fui a Francia y fui en coche. Fui a Alemania y fui en avión y luego en tren. So I hope you understand most of the sentences that I mentioned or pronounced in Spanish, but also I hope you could actually understand the transportations and the destinations I went to during my holidays. Fui en vuelo directo desde Edimburgo hasta Barcelona. El vuelo fue rápido, solo duró dos horas y media. So, can you guess what this person is telling us here? What Esme did? Fui en vuelo directo desde Edimburgo hasta Barcelona. Well, as you can see, we have a plane, so that means that it's a flight. And the word directo means direct. And she's telling us where from and all the way to. So she went from Edinburgh to Barcelona. By the way, she's telling us also what type of flight it was. She's telling us it was fast. Fue rápido. It means it was a quick one. And she's also telling us that it lasted two hours only. In two and a half hours, sorry. Solo duró dos horas y media. So we can describe our trips by saying fue. That means was. So we can say el viaje fue aburrido. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Aburrido. Some of them trips can be. Extenuante. I know sometimes when I travel to Colombia, cuando viajo a Colombia, el viaje es muy extenuante. O el viaje fue extenuante. Can you guess, by the way, what that word means? Largo. Oh, yes. You know, some of these flights can be long, largo. Some of them can be pleasant, agradable. El viaje fue aburrido o el viaje fue extenuante, o el viaje fue largo, o el viaje fue agradable. So as you can see, now I have another block of information that, can, that I can use to describe my holidays. So first we say where we went. Fui a Colombia. Fui en avión. El viaje fue largo. So I have three types of information and they are, all, they are all valid and very good to be used. But we can also say, con quien fuiste? Who did you go with? Well, fui con. So I'm going back to what I was saying earlier with fui. Con, I went with my family. Fui con mi familia. Fui con mi padre, mi madre y mis dos hermanas. Fui con mi familia. Fui con mi padre, mi madre y mis dos hermanas. Fui con unos amigos. I went with some friends. Fui con un grupo del instituto. So now we have four very important blocks of information. We can say where we went. We can say how we got there. We can say what type of journey or trip it was, but also we can say who we went with. So for, in for instance, fui a España, fui en avión, fui con mi familia. Fue un viaje aburrido. So you can use all this to create a nice paragraph in past tense about your holidays. Always remember that you can come back to these lessons. You can replay the lesson, pause and try again, take pictures of the slides that I'm using right now. Feel free to do 
everything to you so you can get a lot of information. But also remember that you can talk to your teacher and your teacher will help you a lot with all of these sentences and these structures. Now, this is another important one. We are going to be saying, ¿Cuánto tiempo pasaste allí? How long did you stay there for? Pasé. I was there or I stayed there for 15 días, which is what we call in, this, in English as a fortnight. O unos días, just for a few days. Dos semanas, two weeks. Un fin de semana, uh, a weekend. Un mes, a month. So, once again, I'm giving you another extra very good block of information that you can use when you're describing your holidays and is how long you stay there. So let's see where I can use those ones so far. Fui a España. Uh, fui en avión. Fue un viaje largo. Fui con mi familia. Pasé dos semanas allí. The word allí means there. But you can also say where you stayed during your holidays. So you can say un camping, un hotel, un apartamento, una caravana, la casa de unos amigos. Now, I'm using now the word or the phrase me alojé en. Me alojé en. Take note of this one. It's really important. It's a very good phrase to use because you're saying I stayed at. And also, it's a very difficult one for us to pronounce in, in English or in Spanish. Me alojé en. Me alojé en un camping. Me alojé en un hotel. Me alojé en un apartamento. Me alojé en una caravana. O me alojé en, las ca en la casa de unos amigos. So look at this. We have now five different things to use when we are talking about our holidays. We can say where we went, who we went with, how our trip was, how long I stayed there, and also where I stayed at. All of these bits of information make your sentences and your paragraphs and your speaking a lot better. Now, you can also say how far, or you can give more specific locations about where you stayed. Cerca de la playa. Next to the beach. En el centro de la ciudad. In the town center. But these are extra bits that you can actually research or ask your teacher to improve your writing. Always ask your teacher, how can I improve my writing? Or how can I improve my speaking? And your teacher, I am certain, will help you using new sentences or more complex ones so that you actually show how good you can be in Spanish. Now, let's have a look at this. Me alojé en un hotel de tres estrellas. Me alojé en un chalet muy bonito y con una piscina. Mi habitación tenía balcón y una vista fenomenal al mar. I'm going to repeat these three sentences. Me alojé en un hotel de tres estrellas. Me alojé en un chalet muy bonito con una piscina. Mi habitación tenía balcón y una vista fenomenal al mar. So really important in this case is that now we have more content and content that very likely we're not expecting to use at the very beginning of our, of our session today. And now we are. How cool is that? So, what did you do you during your holidays? Well, tomé el sol en la playa y nadé en el mar. There you go. I sunbathed and I swam in the, in the ocean or in the sea. Hice varias excursiones, visité museos y castillos. Yes, I did several excursions and I went to museums and castles. Pasé el tiempo jugando al golf con mi padre. I played golf with my parents or with my dad. Bailé en la discoteca. Exactly, I danced at the nightclub. Saqué muchas fotos. I took lots and lots of pictures. Fui a varios restaurantes y comí los platos típicos de la región. Paella y tapas. Well, 
As you can see, we have lots and lots of information that we can use. Remember, always be creative and always come back to this lesson so you can revise and review all these new words that I'm giving you today. In the meantime, remember that practice makes better. And if you manage to make it to this end of the lesson, it means that you are really interested and keen to learn a lot more. In the meantime, I want to wish you the very best and I hope I can see you very soon. Muchos éxitos y hasta la vista.